Well, good morning, everybody, or afternoon. It's 1 o'clock Eastern, 10 o'clock my time. I'm here in Tucson, Arizona. My name's Woody. I'll be driving the presentation here. When you're talking to your clients and they're on Pro 2014 or 15, et cetera, you know, what feature sets should I show them when they come in the office or through Zoom or whatever, whatever you guys use to uh, share out your screen with your clients, should I really be focusing on? Now, for training clients, I, I'll try to remember, um, I do like in the Pro Advisor tab of your QuickBooks Online Accountant, there is some training clients, PDFs. There's five PDFs that just go from setup all the way through, you know, payroll and apps and, and uh, QuickBooks payments. So ARAP, sales expenses, you know, all that kind of stuff. So uh, definitely use those PDFs. They're up to date. Um, and so the, the screenshots are current, et cetera. Now, this is me, a longtime pro advisor. I uh, used to be desktop, mostly QBO now, but I still install QuickBooks Account Edition, Enterprise Account Edition, and even point of sale every year. I've uh, been with Intuit since 04, and then uh, also still do the QBO show. We, we had a show last Thursday. You can check out the podcast at RadioFreeQB.com, and then we do it every two weeks, every two Thursdays at uh, 2 o'clock Pacific time. Right now, in Tucson, I'm just happy to be Pacific time, but I know soon it's going to change where I'll be an hour ahead and only two behind uh, Eastern. And also, please feel free to leverage this QuickBooks matrix Right? In the PowerPoint, there's links to a bunch of other stuff and resources for you that are free, but the matrix tries to compare uh, uh, like 130-ish different feature sets across the QuickBooks ecosystem because we support both desktop and QBO. Right? Today, I'm focused on QBO, but um, you know, there, you're still supporting other things. So this is what I'm going to try to cover in the hour. Keep it high level and try to organize it as best I can and try not to tangent so much or cause any confusion. If you're seeing any of that, by all means, put it in the questions box. I have a couple polls to ask, too, uh, particularly around the pace of the webinar. I don't want to go too fast or too slow, et cetera. But we're going to start on the phone app, and I'm going to do an overview of what they can do just when they download QuickBooks on the phone. Right? This isn't the app for Windows or the app for the Mac right? that you guys might use, your clients might use. That's separate. Uh, this is just when I go into the App Store and download QuickBooks, that's what it is. There's one for self-employed, there's one for QuickBooks. I'm going to start out with bank feeds there, look at some reports, everything you can do on there. I'm even going to take a picture of a receipt, show you how that shows up with the doc attached, and then there's a time tracking user too uh, that we can look at as well to enter time. Then we'll go to some invoicing for time and expense, kind of thematic. We'll go segue into that. There's a global setting as well as uh, at the recurring template level, online invoicing we should speak to, and then we have project tracking. Then back to recurring templates for QuickBooks payments and sales receipts. Real quick on inventory and two-sided items, what's the difference? And, you know, they might want to know if there's price rules, but I can track inventory in QBO+. Plus. And then user types, you can now uh, restrict someone from seeing payroll that you want to see everything else in the program. So there's a no payroll access option. It's really just a checkbox that says payroll access. So. Uh, doc Attach, that'll be important to your clients. You'll see it with the phone app, but also in product. And then quick bank feeds overview. Now, I, I'm on the fence on, you know, you, you're probably not showing your clients bank rules or automation, right? Because you're setting that up. We don't want them to do that. So probably, I might just, because you guys are all accountants, I might show you where you can go that might help them. They might like that because it automates data entry. But I'm not, I am not uh, saying that we want them or I want them to set it up. You set up bank rules or the automation checkbox, right? That's for you. I leave that to the pros, and I, I think that's fair. And you can train your clients on it if you want. But All right, and as always, I'm using QBO Plus to start because of the class location tracking. I'm, I probably won't even mention that. It's a setting. You probably know if you've been to, to the service base beyond the basics. I think we go over it very briefly. But if you're used to class tracking in Pro or Premier and they're coming to QBO, your client knows that there's class tracking in QBO Plus. There's purchase orders. There is a first in, first out valuation method for inventory. Right? Billable time and expense, pass through time. We're going to look at that today. And they're going to want that. The service based business, passing stuff through. Uh, profitability by project or job, things like that. That's all QBO Plus. And they can do budgets. I'm not really looking at that today, but there's a budget, but only for the profit and loss, not the balance sheet. And you're not doing the balance sheet by class either. Okay? And then there's like 100 plus reports. So for me, if you include everything that's in QBO Essentials, like accounts payable tracking, recurring templates, like memorized transactions, if you will, delayed charges, multi-currency, um, I mean, there's a lot of stuff you could show clients that might appeal to them. Every client's different. So I'm kind of taking, it's a big matzo ball out there on, or taking quite a liberty, you go out on a limb on what I think. 
why your clients might want QBO. So hopefully there's some stuff you can take away that's impactful, right? Uh, and you'll just let me know, right? And then multi-currency, but really this is most akin to QuickBooks Pro, right? We got price rules in here, which is like price levels, uh, progress invoicing. Maybe we can even look at that today. Right. So, and then do download the deck. There's a bunch of upcoming webinars here. Uh, I'll let you go through this on your own. A lot of free resources, and then all of the slides, right, that you can go through here. Okay. All right, cool. Now, the deck is in the handout section. If for some reason you are unable to do it, or you wanted to ask me a question about something else, um, by all means, you can email me, woody underscore adams at intuit.com. And I'll reply. Now, real quick, you're looking at my screen now, and we're going to go into the phone. I promised you the phone first. But first, let me do a poll. And I'm going to launch the poll. Hopefully, you're seeing that. Uh, if you can answer it, that's great. Just information for me. There's three polls, one now, one at the bottom of the hour, and then one at the very end, right? So this one, this poll, what defines the majority of your client base? So, yeah, product-based, service-based, or a mixture of both. Cool. Wow, I'm surprised that it's right now almost 90% service-based businesses. That's awesome. So uh, that helps me because some of the stuff I'm showing today are service-based. And they're probably going to be out on the phone too, right, creating estimates out there, which I'm going to do right now. So 100% voted. Thank you so much for voting. And 89% um, service-based, 11% mixture of both. Okay. And then we'll be back for, for uh, poll two you know, later. Again, no CPE. Sorry, I can't do that, but let's just try to line in this stuff. So I have this cool app. It's called A PowerSoft Manager, a friend of mine uh, found, and it allows me to broadcast, you know, the phone app. Okay. So I hope you guys are seeing this. And here is QuickBooks on the phone. And if you're not seeing it, let me know, please. Okay. But uh, you should all be seeing it and, and hearing me okay. And hopefully that that's uh, working out for you. So um, this is the homepage dashboard. Now, how did I get to this QuickBooks app? Because the, I think that your clients, from what I've seen from presenting to firms 101 and then all these group webinars and then all this stuff, and I have a bunch of friends in the industry too that are doing what you're doing as well. Maybe not, they don't have as large a, fir a firm as you do, but some of the friends I have do. They have like one of my friends is in like uh, one of the top eight firms nationally, right? So not that that matters. I mean, still consistently, what do your clients have? They have a checking account or American Express, I mean, you know, credit card, which I have the American Express in this, this case, because you can do bank feeds on the phone. But they also have a phone, right? And they're getting more and more mobile. So, and I forget the stats, I wish I had a slide on that, but it's like, I think 93% or something of small business clients are just totally mobile or, or even gonna be all mobile by 2020, but I think it's already today, right? So, where did I get it? I went to the App Store and I looked for QuickBooks. You see, above my head there, it's just a QuickBooks right next to Netflix. That's the app. Now, I can go into Chrome and sign into QBO, right? That's for the time tracking, which I can show you too. But I have, um, this is the QuickBooks app, and I just went to the App Store and downloaded it. There's a self-employed one, because you'll have your self-employed clients. And then, you know, there's my QuickBooks app here. Um, now, I'm not using this for QBOA. I mean, I guess this to bring me to the Your Books file. And if you want all the features of QuickBooks Online, you're not using this app either. This doesn't have all the features of, like, logging in through the web, right? Um, but for on the go, it has plenty. I just wish it had the ability to enter a bill, you know, or pay bills. But it has most of the other stuff that you would need from a transaction standpoint when you're on the go. And it's heavy on the customer side. So service-based businesses really works out. Um, so you download it. Since they already have a login to QBO, right, then they're, um, they're going to be able to just sign in. And then they open up their company file, and here's all the data, right? So let me show you what it has first, um, and I don't need my mouse. I always make that mistake. I'm going to click on here, and we have literally notes and attachments. So I'll, <laughs> that's a picture I have from a long time ago. These are all receipts attached to transactions, notes, and you can also just add a note and assign it to a customer, right? So I can add it for a particular customer and, you know, whatever the note would be. Right? So you can add a note, and even the paper clip would be like a, an attachment from a photo. Because I'm going to actually take a picture of an expense. But if I just want to note on this client and like, hey, the estimate changed. We're doing actually another eight hours for, dr for drywall because of this issue. There's a bunch of ants behind the wall or whatever it is, right? Tag on another eight hours. So we don't really do change orders. I could use an item for that and then add that to the estimate, 
right? Or but right now I'm just adding to the customer record, which would still show in that notes tab in the customer record. In uh, you know, will show in you know note tab of customer record. Mer. Okay, save that. You can do an attachment, all that kind of stuff, and attach. Because in QBO, you can attach documents, and there'll be a common theme, you know, for um, from, you can do it to customers, vendors, and transactions, right? So you have the note thing. Also, I have my products and services list, and they're set up by category. So I see my administrative stuff, and then, you know, stuff in bookkeeping services, which we're going to use to the estimate, which I did already. There's my bundle item, et cetera. You can even do a search for items that way, right, and find it. Then you have payroll, which opens another tab. We're not really going to cover that. Customers and projects, I can add new customers. I can even add projects to a particular customer. And I think I already had a customer for today we're going to focus on. This would be beyond the basics 0917 USD. Yeah, this is a project, right? And I can see my activity. So I got an estimate already. And then I can see details about the actual, you know, I can put in some details here, even a GPS locator icon, phone number, et cetera. So there's all that that stuff you can do as well. Vendors is also, and then banking. Let's look at banking. So here's the transaction entry you can do. We're just going to go down that left-hand panel. I'm looking at the checking account. We've got 66 new transactions. And then if it's uncategorized, I'm going to leave it. I can click in and choose the appropriate category, right, whether I even have to look or I'm looking for, say, cost of goods sold or something like that wasn't really office equipment. That's a nursery. And you can do a search, too, up at the top. Just type in right, cost of goods sold, direct labor, whatever. I'm just going to use uh, cost of goods sold. Now I have it, and then I can accept the transaction in. Right? You can also accept it when you see the, the transaction. I can just swipe it. Right? When it checks it off green, that, puts it into, that accepts it from the for review tab into the register. So again, I'm assuming you guys are, are doing bank feeds with your clients and you know the for review tab where you go and you categorize stuff or accept it into the register. So I can look at this insurance payment, good. I can, uncategorized, I'll wait, repair and maintenance, good. Gas and electric, owner's time to jobs, hold on. I might want to then choose a customer. We'll do the 1601 and I can make it billable. I mean, I'm working the bank fee, but also the transaction that I'm about to accept into the register. So I can do all that right on the phone. You can click match, transfer, if it's, if it's like that, you know, they might see a credit card payment or something, so you want to transfer to the checking account, et cetera, so it matches, or it just matches with, uh, you know, I already, they already put this transaction in the register. But my goal is to have all the transaction entry coming in from the phone from the feed itself. And I can add a payee, I can do a split class, et cetera, right? Okay, it's just, it's just going in, but not really a bill. Uh, previous transaction can be accepted, see details, well, we'll ignore it. But still... You know, you're just going through, and when I see rules too, I can just, there's the Mendoza rule, boom. So I'm, slight, I'm swiping to the right. I can look at, I can sort by amount, date, A to Z, money in or out. I can even select multiple if I want to. So that's the feed, and I have the checking account as well as the Amex, which we're going to look at today because I have something today that already set up. Let's look at it. Uh, let's see, this Chick-fil-A, 2754. I uploaded it, right? Pretend it came down last night. Now, I'm going to take a picture of the receipt to match to it. Okay, so they're doing date entry from the phone, and it should match to the bank feed. That's my scenario I have. I just wanted to show you later on. In a, in a few seconds, we'll look at that. All right, so that's bank feed. I can look at the chart of accounts, um, right? And what's nice is I don't really have the option to add one. You probably like that. Expenses, we'll get back to that. So estimate, invoice, invoice payment, sales receipt, bank deposit. So, and then you have a, so these are the sales type transactions, estimate, invoice, invoice payment, so receive payment, right? Sales receipt, when not accounts receivable is involved, and then bank deposits. And then I have a P&L and a balance sheet. So on the go, on the phone, your client will like this. I can see a chart and graph. It's one of the few charts and graphs we have in QBO to begin with. And then I can even view the actual report itself. Now, I can't drill down to see the detail. I still need to be in the browser. But, you know, I'm seeing my P&L while I'm on the go. And uh, this month, choose the date. This month, the date. Maybe we can just look at, yeah, this month, the date. 
So there you go. So P&L and balance sheet, and there's, there's the chart and graph, right? Balance sheet be the same kind of way. Now I can do a snag it, right? I mean, if you wanted a picture of it or something like that, I could just hold down the circle and then the, you know, the power button, boom, and then that's a picture, right? And I can do what I want with a picture if I want to tag that to an email or something like that, right? Okay. So you have that. You have some settings where I can switch to a different company file. I can, I have overdue invoice alerts still, which comes to my phone. Like every week I get like 27 invoices overdue. Tax rates, sales forms, company information. I can even customize an invoice template right now on the phone. I forgot, that was a fairly new enhancement a couple months ago. You just choose the right color and add a footer text and apply it. So not as much. Again, it's, it's simple functionality, fundamental, but not, you know, if you need full functionality like users, preferences, payables, um, more reports, more lists, that's going to be in the browser, which I can, I can go in through Google Chrome, which I can show you as well. But the phone has a bunch of stuff. Now, uh, on the dashboard, you go back to home. Let me show you a good way to, to enter transactions. From the dashboard, you got a plus sign at the bottom. This activity shows me transactions that I have entered, and I've done a lot of that. Now, I created an estimate earlier. We're going to do the expense in a sec, but this is, you know, all the, and I'm in the file, right? I'm going to go to the estimate because on the phone on an estimate, I can actually get a signature. And this is great for your service-based clients. You just click get signature. There you, go. there you go. And I can flip it over and sign. Oh, there you go. It wants me to do it that way. All right. And click done. Name accepted by, right, and then convert to invoice. I can do it right there. I'll wait till it's in there because I want to show the progress invoicing, but still, I'm just going to click done. I got the signature, right, and it shows at the bottom on the actual, you know, estimate itself. There's the SIG. So I can take a screenshot and send it. Now I'm going to email it because I want to see if the SIG is captured. Sorry, I, did, I wasn't able to test it. Uh, before the webinar today, I had something else to do for what's new in QuickBooks Desktop 2019. Got a lot of stuff going on right now. But anyway, so I'm going to send it here to me and see if the signature, yeah, check it out. It's going to be right there. Now, I can't do that on the actual, uh, what do you call it, uh, when I'm in the browser, but you can do signatures on the estimates, right? So someone, you literally, I could go out, Woody, sign it, please, and then we're going to go ahead and do... Uh, you know, we're going to, um, you're going to commit to what we're going to do for you, et cetera, right? Accept the estimate. Now, let's a little bit more on the phone app. Just one more. This is probably the best thing you want to show them. If you show them one thing, show them this. I always try to save the best stuff for last. That is a picture of an expense. They're going to want this. They're out somewhere. It's a work lunch or they're at Lowe's or Home Depot. My, my example is a work lunch. And I'm going to take a picture of the receipt. It's not like OCR or anything. I still have to enter the data, but it's a free way to do it. So here's the total, and I'm going to choose to take a picture, choose existing or take the pick itself. It's going to do like fit this, fit to the edges of the paper, fit to the edges of the paper. It should say great snap, try folding, great snap pick. You're waiting for the snap pick. 25, 36, 25, 74, we'll call it, we'll call it even. That's the one thing I'm still struggling with is, is taking the pick, you know, but this is where it was. This is a work lunch. Uh, close enough. I'm going to use the photo. Now, this is an attachment on this expense. It was credit card. It remembers the Amex. Who did I pay? And we have, um, I can do a search. I love their half cut sweet tea. And then I, ha I can do location tracking. I can do class tracking. What type of expense was it? Again, here's the chart of accounts. I'm doing a search. We'll do meals, local, which it is. Who was it for? If it was for this job that I use a lot or, you know, maybe for today. Let's just pass some time through. If I go down to beyond the basics and I have this project that we're working on. Right? So I'm going to tag it to it. Make it billable to pass it through. Right? The expense. And then you can even do class tracking. Okay, it's got the total amount, et cetera, click save. And then that, that receipt is going gonna, is gonna to create the transaction in QBO, which I'll show you. Um, and I also wanted to show for the email. So we're off the phone now. 
But that's, that's something you want to show them. You want to show them the phone app because they are mobile. If I get my email up here, I'm going to try to show you guys uh, the uh, Outlook will come up eventually. But I want to show you the email with the receipt, you know, from the estimate. All right, now, left click in the search field. Why? Because it always shows like the last 10 transactions, right? And there's my expense, okay? 2754 to Chick-fil-A. And notice, right, tag to this job, billable. We'll talk about project tracking. Your clients are going to want to do that. And then I have the receipt, right? It's going to open up in another tab. So, I mean, I like that stuff. Again, I'd like to have payables on there if they will. I could do a check with the, with the bank feed. I can do a check with the expense. There's an option for that. That's good. But payables will be sweet on the phone. Not really settings. I don't care about that. I probably want to do that in, quote, unquote, my headquarters, which I would consider in the browser on the phone. We will be coming back, though, for the time user if I get time. But just know this. There is a time-only user with QBO Plus, and, and though it's not on the phone app yet, they can log in, like, to Chrome or something and sign in and enter time just for them and tag it to a job, and there's a little time report. I've gone over that in the, I think, the service-based beyond the best basics. If you've gone to that, you've seen it. But the time entry, I probably won't get to today, but that's, uh, I can't wait till it comes into the QBO app, but I can just log into Chrome or Firefox on my phone anyway to QBO, and you can do that anyway to get to QBOA if you want, et cetera. It's just that the screens are really small, right? That's why I like the app. So missing time, missing payables, eh, that's about it. I mean, if they add that, I think I'm good on the phone app and I can do most stuff. It's definitely heavy, as you saw, oriented customer, right? Customer related. Now, Meredith asks, thanks. I hope you don't mind if I call it your guys' first name. Again, my name's Woody. Uh, don't worry, I won't call it your last name. Um, is OCR in the pipeline? I don't know. I wish I knew. Because uh, I, I hear you, when I'm taking that picture and the receipt's long, I either have to do pano view. You see how I struggle taking the pic. That could just be me. Not really a faux talk, but uh, so I only got half the receipt, you know. Sometimes I have to fold it. So I, I like your OCR idea, but I can't say yet if it's going to be there, you know. All right. Um, let me see if I can look at my estimate and see if it has the signature. Because typically, you know, from the browser, it's not there. It's not going to have the SIG, but it does. Check it out. I just opened it from the PDF in my email. So let's pretend Woody got this, right? And then there's my SIG. That's pretty sweet. I mean, I think that's good for sales. Uh, am I overthinking this one? I just think it's cool because you can take a, pit, a signature while I'm out, meeting with the customer, and then you can sign it, and then it's there uh, just like the expenses there with the attachment. Right, and I can attach a doc to the receipt, a contract or something. I know that's critical too, right? I, I still don't think it shows up on the screen that way. Let's look. Let's go to the estimate. Let's see here, Meredith. My clients won't do the data entry. Is there an inbox type of option? Not yet for the phone app or for that. I know Bill.com has that. Of course, HubDoc, Receipt Bank. Like I can just send it to an email, and the and the docs attached, and it goes over to QBO. So for Meredith, that's a great point. Though QBO doesn't have that yet. Um, I mean, I could. Because they're because I'm doing the data entry right, and they don't want to do it. So that's where HubDoc, ReceiptBank, Bill.com, they all have an email address you can send stuff to. It creates transactions in the in their app, and then it sends it to QBO. Whether it matches the bank feed or not, doesn't matter. It just sends it to QBO with the receipt attached, without having to do any data entry because there's an auto sync from these programs. So it's cool. You have to do some setup, like you would a recurring transaction. But once it's set up, then it's just auto data entry flowing. Good. That's good. Uh, thank you for asking that because I don't even know if I was going to get to all that today. But that's important. I think that's really important. Um, okay, cool. Maybe enough on the app. The estimate, though, scrolling down on the screen, it's not going to have the SIG, right? Oh, wait. Yeah, it does. See? Pick myself out, which you can attach to email. So I have the SIG on the estimate. Right? I think that's pretty sweet. Now, uh, yeah, it's kind of black. I don't know if you guys can see it. That's ridiculous. I'll have to look at that. But it's still there. Yeah. So next thing, we're going to look at uh, time tracking only. I just know that there's a time tracking user. Okay. Know that. Won't have time to do that. Now, let's switch. I'm trying to do better segues in my presentations because I think some people were confused on the last one. So I'm just trying to get better, if you will. Appreciate your patience. 
and we're talking about a wide range of stuff. But I want to go to the next thing they'll want to know, which is invoicing for time and expense and project tracking. Okay? Now, I had that estimate, right? It was attached to the project. You can turn, let's just go through some key settings where all this makes sense, break those down, and then let's do the entry, go to the areas where they are. We'll look at everything from uh, the project itself, uh, invoicing for time and expense, right? You might just have passive time and expense. I know that's big for service-based businesses. 89% here today have service-based businesses. Online invoicing, where do you turn that on? Uh, then we'll go to a P&L by project, progress invoicing against that estimate I created, uh, recurring templates, you know, quickly on items and inventory two-sided items. We'll, that We might stop there. Again, bank fees, I'm going to assume you guys are good. Uh, doc attached, we've kind of already gone over. There's a doc list attachments under the gear icon. You saw me attach it at the phone app level. It's also done at the bottom of transactions. There's a little paperclip icon. You can do a doc attach at customer vendor and transaction level, not at chart of accounts yet or items. Although I can attach a picture to an item, but it doesn't really go with the invoice, right? It just shows on the products and service list. So most of you are here for service-based business. We should look at two-sided items too. But let's go to settings. Some of these things you all have to align just so you know it's available for your client and you can tell them about it and show it to them. So let's start with sales expense and we'll go to advanced, right? Here's where I turn on inventory and here's where I turn on price rules. This is price levels with a date range and I have a price rule set up for today. Right? So, and let's go to down here, you have progress invoicing. I also turned that on. Your clients, particularly service-based, they might want to do two invoices against an estimate. That's also supported now. There's no reporting on it, but I'll show you the visibility at the transaction level. Then online delivery of, e of invoices, I usually leave it there. I'll try to get to a couple slides at the end to show the online invoice, but it's basically, because when you create an invoice, you can save and send a link. The client can click it, or you can just send the email or have a recurring invoice, and there's an option to pay online, particularly if you have payments turned on. And we're going to talk about a sales receipt recurring with uh, QB Payments because it's a free way to get paid without AR automatically. QuickBooks Payments is free, and the ACH from a customer is free. So where do you go do all that? We're going to look at that too. So... Uh, but these are some key things here for sales to consider. Expenses, this is where you make, this is why that items table was on those forms, or you'll see them on cost side. Track expense and items by customer and make it billable. This would be for profitability by, for item or account, right? Profit loss by customer. Billable means pass through time expense to create an invoice from it. Then finally, under advanced, yes, you have time tracking, which is in, QBO Essentials 2 and the ability to make it billable, right? Uh, but I'm using plus because of the two-sided item piece. And there's these expense settings for two-sided items, very important. Don't worry if you if you were getting a cup of coffee or had a quick call and you missed that. In the deck, download it. There are slides on where to go turn all this stuff on. How do I make QBO Plus like pro? But to me, these will be appealing to service-based businesses for sure. Now, the last thing is the automation I want to show. Automatically invoice on build activity. This is a global setting. Every Friday, it's going to create invoice for any customer that has on build activity or on invoice charges. That might not be for all your clients, so you want to do it at the recurring transaction level, which we will get to. Okay. All right. Now, lastly, under advanced, you have projects. Yes, turn that on. Use project tracking. All right. So let's go to projects. It's in the left. Great for service-based businesses, too. They'll want to know. That now, you can do sub-customer if you want. I like project because it's like a project center. So I created this for today. BTV, Beyond the Basics, 091718. And I can see three reports right away. And I'm not going to have any project profitability yet. I will by, by 11 o'clock my time. P&L by project. Actually, can report filtered already for the project. I can see non-billable time and unbilled time and expense. I look at transactions, I see a billable expense charge already, and I see the estimate, right? So I have an estimate here that we can create an invoice. Uh, now, this was created the 14th. The estimate that, oh, that must have gone to a different one. Sorry, yeah, this estimate I went to a different customer. That's why. But you could do it on the phone, and it would show up in here, right? I should have done it to this particular project. Forgive me. 
But uh, you'll, this is a way for me to have a project center for this particular customer job, right? And I can add transactions to the project from here, okay? Now, let's look at, uh, let's stay on the project theme because I don't want to confuse people and jump all around. Let's stay on the project team, theme for a second. Okay, now you'll find projects obviously in the project tab on the left once they turn it on, but also at the customer level. When I go to the customer list itself and I look for beyond the basics, you know, we're going to find projects as its own tab. You know, the project's here, but from the sales and customer, it's its own tab in the customer record. Sorry. Let me go down here to beyond the best basics. This is what I meant. On the customer le list, I just see beyond the best basics. Well, where's all the subs? Well, they're not actually sub-customer. They're projects, but they behave like sub-customers on transactions and lists. And you can filter the report by it. So I go to this main customer I use for all of these webinars, and I see I have a project, right? So you have transaction list, project, customer details, right? That's the difference with projects. Or I could just add a new customer, make it a sub-customer. Really up to you. But I like project because, and I think your service-based clients will like it, because it's a project center for each project where I can then tag, you know, uh, data entry to. So we did an expense. Let's do a bill. You could do time to. This is the pass-through time expense, if you will. What do you guys call it, BTE or whatever? I think that's the industry acronym. So it's a bill for, you know, uh, this particular subcontractor, uh, and they did some work for... Let me get rid of the advertising expense. Because I have the setting turned on, I have the account tab or expenses tab, and I have the items tab, right? Just like in desktop, on a check, right? Expenses items, account items. You need plus for that. Because I want to be able to bookkeeping, sure, that was part of the estimate. And then they also have, uh, you know, they did some tech support, and things like that. We'll say they did three hours of that. And, Right, I'm tagging it. Notice the project is already getting tagged and it's made billable to pass through. If you don't want it to go to an invoice, then uncheck it, but it can still stand for profitability by. It's really up to you. Okay, I'll leave it billable because I know some of your clients, it's, maybe it's about a P&L by job, but they also just want to pass through time expense to an invoice. Right? Again, where do you attach documents? They'll want to know at the bottom of a transaction. All right, so this is a posting transaction. The cost will go because I'm using items, two-sided items, if you will, double-sided items you might know them by. And now I have these transactions linked to the job. And we'll go back and look at the prof project profitability report, which is just a P&L by, you know, this project. Don't have any revenue yet, but already tagging stuff against it. Your question, you're going to say, well, what about payroll? True. At this time, it's coming. It is coming, and I can't wait because then I think QBO Plus totally matches pro. No one uses low manager. So it's really about labor burden, tracking that at the job level. Your service clients need that. It is coming, okay? Uh, a little while out yet, but still, definitely going to be, I think, in my humble opinion, this fiscal year. Okay. Now, um, I want to do a poll. Quick poll. I'm going to do the pace of the webinar. I'm going to just go ahead and quickly... Too fast, too slow, just right. Let me know. This helps me tweak it, right? And uh, seems to me most people are thinking it's just right, which is good. So I learned, I really took that feedback to heart from last week. So I am trying to slow it and try to be more organized in my thinking. Okay. So I appreciate your all honest feedback, and thanks for that. So we're going. I'm going to close the poll. Okay. Now. And then if you didn't want to weigh in and you just want to email me, that's great too. Or do the survey at the end. I'll look. Okay, we only got one more poll at the end, but we're going to keep rolling. So profitability by. Let's go do some revenue against that estimate. Back to project details. See, I like having it from the one center. That's cool. I have friends that are just will never leave sub-customer as their method of tracking jobs, and that's okay because at the sub-customer level, I just have more detail, different name, different email, different address, all that stuff. It doesn't matter in the report. I can still run a profit and loss any day of the week by a customer, a sub-customer, a project. It all looks the same. Main, you know, client name, customer name, colon, sub, or project. all behaves the same. I just like having a project center. Okay? So... Now, let's go to the invoice, the estimate, sorry. 
was I wanted to show this. They will want to know, can QBO progress invoice? And if 89% of you are here for service-based clients, they are probably got, I don't know, 35, 40% of them doing progress invoicing? I don't know. Rough estimate. So full site demo, create invoice, right? Here it is, progress invoicing. So I can do 50% up front, create the invoice, and then I could do 50% later. Now, if I'm doing an upfront deposit, though, then I'm probably using the same approach I do in desktop. Create an item called customer deposit, have it linked to another current liability account, do a sales receipt or go to the make deposit window. I like sales receipts, better reporting, more detail, but anyway. Get the deposit up front. You're not really estimate progressively invoicing, though. But for, if I just have an open estimate, I'm just doing 50%, whatever, and there's no upfront deposit, then this works great. And I have it, you know, what's due of 50%, right? At the bottom, when I click Save, watch, both the invoice and the estimate will have the progress visibility at the bottom. And I can get back to the estimate, right? Progress invoicing, okay? So there's that alive and well also. So we looked at a P&L by project. Now we have a little more against that estimate. Um, let me see, though, because I realized that... Yeah, so now we're at net income 24, 47, 46 for this job. It's looking good, right? Now, there's not an estima, estimate to actual reporting. Please either go to the Beyond the Basics for service-based business or look at the video. If you need it, email me. I'll send it to you because I go through Stacy Kildall's workaround for estimate to actual, which is basically creating a budget for the project or sub-customer, you know, and filling out the budget for the income and expense that you're budgeting, et cetera, and then then there's a budget to actual report, right? Whereas pro, it's like you create the estimate, all of a sudden there's an estimate to actual report when it gets out of bed, you know? So QBO, you got to do an extra couple steps. Some clients, it's just too much to handle if they have a lot of jobs. I don't, I don't encourage it. Then you look at a third-party app like Noify or CoreCon for commercial contractors. Noify is my favorite for residential. Anyway, and they, they already track labor burden, right? So, but that's coming, and then if they want the freeway, meaning just QBO, nothing outside, then they can do a budget to actual. So look on our website for video on that, et cetera. Email me if you want to know more about it. That's great. But I'm just, today we're not really going into that. It's profitability by and progress invoicing. So there's my P&L, right? Now I could always go to a report, right? And let's tie off this project sub-customer thing, get into recurring templates and, and items. I can always go to a P&L. And there's actually a P&L by customer. Right, I already know that, you already know that, but let me just, from a p and I can always come in here and customize, filter, and then by customer. And then I can look for, you know, the beyond the basics, right? See how they're ABC colon, right? Customer colon, sub-customer, right? But we're going to stay with the theme today, right? Run the report. It's the same report. Uh, wait, cruel today. Hold on here. Yay, right? Same 24, 47, 46, right? So you could always do that. It's just that it's not that it, it adds more functionality, this project tracking. It's just that it puts it in a center. I think it's great for pass-through time expense and profitability by. You know, this would be my choice. If there was something else where I needed more info, detail, at, then I would use a sub-customer, meaning I would go to customer list, create a new customer, right? I already have one. You create a new customer, and you check this box. Sorry for jumping around, but is a sub-customer, right? Bill with parent. So there's always this. It's going to behave the same way on a report. It just doesn't have its own center. Okay? And I just think we're going to add more and more stuff to projects. Right? So projects will become the thing. They'll want to know about that. So we've gone through the phone app. Estimate. We've seen progress invoicing. We take a pick of a receipt. The docs attached. So you know about doc attach. Uh, I'll come back to the phone because there is a, a user thing for the phone. We'll do it at the very end, though. Next time I'll try to do it at the same time while I'm on the phone. Sorry about that. We've gone over the global setting for invoicing for time expense. You can automate as well. Any customer create invoices for any unbilled activity or any unbilled, un, uninvoiced charges, right, where they've made it billable. There is a way to... Make it specific. Your client will probably want to know because not all their customers maybe do you want to create invoices for for unbilled activity. Sometimes I have to decide what time or expense or material cogs or whatever goes on the invoice. So if that's the thing, 
I don't usually use that global setting. I go to the recurring transactions list. Now, they're going to want to know about this, memorize transactions, right, in desktop. They can also do it in Essentials and Plus. We're in Plus because of these other things. So you, can already, you know you can already create recurring journal entries, like for prepaid expense, recurring bills, recurring checks, whatever. Recur but we're going to talk about recurring invoices and sales receipts today. And they're going to want to know about this. So down here on this invoice, right, you have the ability. And I'm just showing you where the functionality is. Two things over desktop. The desktop does not do. Yes, desktop does memorized invoices. QBO Essentials and Plus does recurring invoices. However, QBO Plus has the ability to automatically send the e email, same with Essentials, right? So once it creates this invoice, it, it emails it. You know, in desktop, i got to go send forms. And then I can include any unbilled activity. So I don't even put an amount here because, really, I'm just creating this invoice template to pick up any unbilled activity for the customer for the week or the month. And it just goes through and looks for any bill, check, credit card expense. I can't do it on a journal entry because there's no billable box. I know. Er. Um, but we're not doing a lot of journal entries. So cost forms or delayed charge. Any un you know, it's a non-posting sales charge, right, that you can invoice for later. Time. Any of those five things, it's going to create this invoice and include all that unbilled activity for the week. Right where I tag the job, sub customer, uh, and or project, and made it billable. Right, so that's a way to automate it, but make it specific to a customer or client, because maybe the global setting won't work for all your clients because it's just too global. Right, you need to make it specific in particular. So that's how you streamline this. All right, and also I'm going to go into my friend Sean's uh, QBOA. Because he had in his file, because he has payments turned on, <sighs> recurring transaction. In this case, a sales receipt with QuickBooks payments turned on, getting paid automatically. So they're going to want to be able to automate getting paid for sure, right? Let's move on to that. Pretty much done with recurring transactions. Yes, you can set up a recurring reminder, right? But I got to move on to item stuff and a user type thing, and then bank feeds overview. So in the essence of the time, yes, you can set up like a $0 transaction from the reminder list, which is also at gear icon, recurring transactions. I'm going there anyway. I might as well show you, but see the reminder list. And you can set up a reminder as they pop up on the dashboard. So I did that Friday because I had some internal training, so I just wanted to remember. Now, they're probably using Outlook or Gmail or Google Calendar or something like that. I don't, I don't mean it's meant to replace it, but you could throw a reminder on there for them. Pay sales tax. <laughs> and it just comes up, right? View reminders. Okay. So back to transactions. We're going to do a recurring sales receipt. Click OK. It's going to come up here. And I'll make it a little smaller. But uh, I'm naming the template, right? This is going to be like monthly fee, monthly service fee, anything. This is for any, like, pool company, landscaper, uh, anybody doing like a monthly thing for their clients, education, training, uh, you name it, you'll know more than me, all the possibilities. Why even do a recurring invoice? Why even do an invoice? Why not just turn on QuickBooks Payments in Settings? It's under the gear icon. It's its own setting. It's called Payments, right? You, ch you set up the template, the recurring sales receipt for Sean. Remember, Automatically send email. Invoices and sales receipts out of QBO get automatically sent when you're doing a recurring template. So desktop has memorized transactions too. You just can't auto send. Doesn't pick up any unbilled activity. Wish the sales receipt did. That's only for invoicing. We were just there. But now monthly on the, let's see, what are we on? The 17th? We'll say on the 18th, we'll start tomorrow. You know, Sean's going to be billed for, you know, and, and, and he, this is actually a real file. So I'm just going to choose something. I don't even know what half this stuff is. But we'll say, pretend it's a service, right? You know, and it's like 200 bucks. And th you can do this, by the way, if you're using QBA and you're using the Your Books file. You can do this too. All your services, like all accounting services you do, plus QBO roll-in, you know, if you're doing it under wholesale billing, right? Taxable or not, I'm going to do non-tax course, class location tracking. Here's where you're seeing it. But it's a recurring sales receipt. When I choose payment method ACH, 
You can do credit card, but that has fees. It opens up an enter bank info tab. <clears throat> I have signed authorization. I can enter the bank info, Sean's account and routing number, right? And I can even read him a script or probably better have paper trail. In this case, we like paper. Signed authorization form. Hopefully you have that. Okay. Let me see if I can open it up. I think it'll open eventually. Yeah, here it is. Download it, send it to him, get it back, right? You want it signed just for you. There's nothing really the customer else has to do, right? I mean, as soon as you turn on payments and set up the recurring sales receipt for every single client, now I'm talking to you, is, is a, a way to bypass AR for the firm. Use the Orbooks file, set up like 80, 100, 150 sales receipts that are recurring for all the clients that want to pay you or are willing to have you direct debit out of their account monthly. You know what I mean? And then you can send this to them and get it back. Uh, by the way, another thing, I'm not sure if it's the client will love it. I think so, but they can upload docs to you from the My Accountant tab. I'm going to try to end on that if I can remember. But um, they could sign it and upload this back to you, and then you have it in QBOA in the client record. In the client list, there's, an, there's a docs tab, right? So I, I can have this engagement letter, but I know it's not, but you probably have the engagement letter in there and then the bank transfer off form. Just some ideas. I don't know. I mean, again, you, I always default to your guys' best practices for this stuff because you have real clients, okay? But I think it's just a good way, you know, to get paid. And then it's just an online, you know, it, it, they're just paying you. It's the, the, the rub is that it's five days to fund. So I'll get, uh, Sean will get the receipt tomorrow on the 18th and I'll see the money in my bank account on the 23rd or eh, five to seven days, depending, right? Five banking days. So 23rd or the next Monday, whatever. Right. But that's better than any AR period I've ever heard of. Right. So if 89% of you here really focus on service-based businesses, they probably have some monthly fees, set up a recurring sales receipt, turn on QuickBooks payments, put in the banking routing. It's all free. Payments is free. ACH payments free. Of course, you can do credit card, but that's that's that. Now, let me go back to the this here to show some slides on um, the online invoicing. Yep, we got the sales receipt already went by. You guys saw that. Or you could do credit card, right? Just so you know, that could be one way too, recurring sales receipt or credit card. Those just have fees, okay? So let me stop there. Um, recurring transaction list, right? So got it. Now, I think I added it. Bank feeds, where are you? Progress invoicing we did, project tracking. Right, we're getting to items next, don't worry. Let me try to find this, guys. Sorry about that. I thought I had it in, um, here we go. Online invoicing, just to tie this off. I think this is important for your clients, too. This is what the customer view of the online invoicing goes. Remember, it's a setting, it's a sales setting, and if whether I do save and send link, which is an option when you're saving an invoice, as you know, there's like three options, save and new, save and close, save and send link, or I just happen to send the invoice automatically, they, the customer will click view invoice, see the details, and with payments turned on, there's a pay now button. And I can track activity. I can ask questions, the client can ask questions, and they can all track it in the invoicing window if it's been viewed or not. So, you know, your clients want to know, and they send invoices to their customers. They'll say, oh, I never got the invoice. And they can be like, really? Because you viewed it on Tuesday. <laughs> so there's that, too. You know, that's just in the invoicing tab. So Desktop 19 is getting that, right? Status of an invoice. We have that already in sales, and then the invoice tab, right? You'll see the view status as well as what's deposited and stuff like that. I'm kind of going beyond, but you know what I mean. Online invoicing, I think, is important. So thanks, Sean, for letting me use your file. Okay, let's look at, let's leave items for last. Let's quickly go to manage users. Just wanted to show your clients will want to know. And don't worry, I know 11% of you have a mix of both. So you're going to have product-based business. So we're going to line on two-sided items in the inventory part. I'm not going to do huge functionality, but I want to do a price rule, partial receiving, that kind of stuff. And what is it missing? Yeah, I always like to align on that. I don't want you to get stuck in a meeting with a client, right? Right? Doesn't have unit of measure. Doesn't have build assemblies. We should, we should know that. I'm not hiding anything. All right. Manage user. We'll click add a user. Just so you know, uh, a custom user. Next, all. 
Now, all users like a company admin, but before, because you need to be an all user if you want to do bank feeds, bank registers. Um, like I could do a limited access sales and customer, but I can't make it a posit. So you're like, what? So if I need to make it a posit, but also, you know, do all the invoicing stuff, but I don't want them to see payroll, this is the new thing. So I uncheck payroll access. So because the all user typically, historically, as you know, right, the all custom user can what? It's like a company admin, they can see payroll. So now I can't see payroll, payroll reports, payroll in the register, anything like that, but I can do everything customer and vendor related. It was just a, a quick ad we did because that was the biggest feedback. Hey, I need a user that's like a company admin without payroll access. Now, yeah, I'd love to have a couple check boxes for financial reports. I'd love to have a check box for several other things, right? But um, right now, it's the payroll was the critical one, and I hope we continue to improve, uh, you know, user setup, right? But I wanted to make sure your clients would know that they can now create someone as a company admin to a file but not see payroll. Um, the other thing is I have a time tracking user only. That's only just time, their own time. They have their own email. And they can access from Google Chrome on the phone to enter time, right? And that's it. It's not yet in the QBO app or the QuickBooks app on the phone. Okay, so I want to make sure. And Plus and Essentials have time tracking. So for whatever reason, you have a client that doesn't need Plus, then have them on Essentials, but they can still do time and they can still do pass-through time, time to an invoice, right? They just can't do a profit and loss buy or, you know, uh, you know, pass through expense material, but they can certainly do time. And that might be a client that you have. That's, that's it. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, dear. My mind. Um, yep. Okay. Let's go to items. I thought of something else, but, oh, yeah. One other thing to consider. Plus level allows for this. Reports only. Okay. Now, they can drill down, but they can't modify anything. But they can see a P&L. So, it's like... It's kind of like a company admin, you know, but all they have is report only view. None of these reports only in time tracking count against the user list though. Clients might want to know that. Okay. Bank feeds. I think you guys are good. We did it on the phone, right? You're connecting to bank feeds, but I, I don't want to think, oh, your clients are going to love rules and automation because I want that. The, I think you'll agree with me. That's for you to set up. You decide what doesn't need review and it can just be automatically accepted in the register. But they might want to know that they can, and then we'll go to items. They're at the rule level. When I go to bank rules, just want to show you that it's there. Like for this, for Google, uh, where's the Google one? I wish I could alphabet. Yeah, see this automatic, automatic, when I edit the Google rule, I don't need to review it, so it automatically gets put in the books. I might do that for my client, but I'm setting up the rules myself, right? I'm setting up the rules myself as an accountant because I know how I want it to go into the product. So we're not really doing much with bank feeds or bank rules today because, it, I mean, it's cool they have bank feeds, and I showed you how you know the phone, but I'm not, we're not going to go into rules and automation much because that's really for you. But they might like it. You might tell them, hey, I can automate the data entry. We can set it up so it gets automatically entered in the register for you. Okay. That might be appealing to them. They might have someone they work with in the office that's always going in, and, you know, in, in the bank feed and desktop or something, and they're clicking on something and, you know, choosing a different match or they're clicking on a transaction and they're choosing the wrong account or whatever, I can automate it by checking that box at the rule level to bypass that. They might not even see the transaction, right? That's what I'm talking about. That might still be appealing or compelling to a client. But I love that I can do bank feeds from the phone. I just can't do any of the rules, which is cool, right? Okay, dog attached, we're good. The last thing I wanted to show is items, All right? Five minutes left, products and services. So 89% of you have mostly focused on service base, but 11% product, and I bet all of you just have to deal with items, right? In QBO Plus, we have two things that are important. I went over. You have two-sided items. So here are all the types within the products and services list, which is QBO's version of the items list. You can also see that on the phone as we started off with. You remember that. Um, we have an inventory part, which is plus only. Simple start and essentials don't do that. It's a three-sided item, and it's first-in, first-out valuation. 
And we have non-inventory and service and a bundle. Bundle is not a build assembly. It's a group item. There is no build assembly. There's no unit of measure. There's no sales order fulfillment. That's still Premier, right? I mean, Pro has a single unit of measure, but for multiple units of measure, sales order fulfillment, build assembly, that's Premier and Enterprise. Not even Pro has that. So again, Plus is most akin to Pro on the desktop side. However, you are going to want service items that are two-sided, right? I had that on my estimate. I invoiced invoice or item base too. Like, what do we use? Accounting consulting? Edit the item. We'll look at it. Two-sided, double-sided, meaning I have revenue and I also have cost of goods sold or expense. One item stands for both sides. I can use one on a check. I can use one on a sales receipt or an invoice, right? I also have the ability to create price rules. I created one for today at the item level, and there's a price rule list as well. We'll look at that on a sales receipt in a second. And then I also have, let's filter by inventory. Well, there's low stock. We track out of stock as well. There's a reorder point. But I can filter by category. You can assign your items to a category. I'm going to filter by inventory. These are all my inventory parts. And I'm going to go to low stock. It's so one gadget's out of stock. Negative 105 on hand. I can make quantity and a starting value adjustment if Woody put in the wrong cost when he entered the item. You can do that. It's not meant to be periodic, but I can do a quantity adjustment. It's a real transaction. Show up on reports. There are two reports for inventory, valuation summary in detail. There's a bunch of item-related reports, sales by customer, all that stuff. Right? So there's all that. Um, and here's where I run a quick report, make it inactive, or whatever. So I can reorder it because I wanted to show. And I can reorder in batch as well. But it's a three-sided item. And we'll just say I got it from Amazon. And we got, a, you know, when you mouse over, it shows. Reorder point as well as quantity on hand. We'll just say that I, I bring in 150 of these. This is a posting. This is non-posting. This is my purchase order. I'm going to click save. Non-posting. Copy to bill. Could do a check or credit card expense. Let's just do, yeah, it's Amazon. Let's do how it really would be. Plus sign, expense. Probably not sending too many checks to Amazon these days. If I do Amazon, the drawer should open up. There's an open PO. Add it, right? Okay. Let's just bring in, though, 200. So back order. Doesn't really track back order, but we'll click save. We'll go back to the PO. One link transaction, just so your clients know, you do some partial receiving, right? It says it's closed, should not be closed. I did not close it. Oh, I did all of them. Sorry, I hit the wrong thing, guys. Sorry about that. Let me go back to the expense. My fault. Getting to the end. Hang in there with me. Let's say we brought in 100, back ordering 50, okay? You can track partial receiving. Now, when I go to the partial, per, partial, the purchase order, if you will, I'll have that it. it's received 100, right, 50, it's not closed yet, okay? So I can then copy to a bill, right, check, or another expense to bring in the other 50, right? Partial receiving. Now, selling. Last thing we'll talk about today. And then please let me know in the survey after what are the things you want to see that you think are compelling to clients? What things should I take out? Because... You know, I want your feedback because I want this to be something like, hey, here's why clients want QBO, and let me just do the six or eight things that are really key, and the, stuff, the other stuff doesn't really matter, right? I don't want to do stuff that doesn't matter. All right, go into a sales receipt. Let's sell some gadgets just so you know, um, and we'll sell it to uh, the webinar customer and gadget I think I have, right? We can mouse over, see how much we have, 45. So we'll sell that there's, you know, they bought 20. Look at the, look at the rate, though. Okay, I set up a price rule. It's a price rule list. So much like price levels in pro, but better because you have the ability. We'll click save and close here, and we'll end on this. They will want to know, and price rules are, are enticing because of not just um, the fact that I can do price levels, but there's a customer type field that opens up at the customer level, so I can filter reports in the list by customer type. Right? That's what was always missing in QBO. You turn price rules on, hey, maybe you don't even want to do price rules, but you want another metric to report by or filter by. Customer types, great. Family, friends, this, that, right? You, I mean, there's only so many lists, right? It's like desktop. So how do I want to report? What fields and lists can I use to get there? 
Customer type's a great one. So turn on price rules. I showed you it's a setting, it's a sales setting. I set this one up for today beyond the basics. What I like about price rules versus price levels in Pro, but price rules in QBO, there's a date range. So I have this webinar again on the 1st of October, which I'm going to tweak based on your guys' feedback today. Um, and then, you know, the price rule is good to then, right? I did it for 25% discount or decrease based on the sales item, and then all the items reflect that, 25% right? off. But on the 2nd of October, it'll go back to regular pricing. That's awesome. You need enterprise for that one on the desktop side.